Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Spiders are among the world's most feared, despised and revered creatures. They appear in legends and myth from ancient Greece to African folklore and even appear as a 150 foot geoglyph in the Nazca deserts of Peru. Spiders come in a variety of colours and sizes, ranging from the very tiny, the Samoan moss spider, measuring only 0.3mm long, to the massive, the Goliath bird-eating spider, which measures 12 inches long. However, if cryptozoologists are to be believed, a much larger arachnid lurks in the rainforests of the Congo, the Chuba Fofi. The Chuba Fofi live deep in the Congo, and according to natives, they build huge webs spanning from tree to tree, using the leaves as a sort of camouflage, often crossing game trails. In other parts of the rainforest, the giant spiders apparently use a different web technique, where they dig burrows under tree roots and cover the burrow with webs and trip lines which they camouflage with leaves, similar to the technique used by the trapdoor spider. Adult Jubafofi are said to look like giant tarantulas, dark brown in colour, with a body measuring 28 to 30 inches in circumference, roughly the size of a basketball, with prominent fangs and very potent venom. When standing fully upright, they are as tall as a human. The eggs of the Chibafofi are a pale yellow colour and are the size and shape of peanut shells. The young are bright yellow with a purple abdomen, but become dark brown as they mature. The natives avoid these nests at all costs, often taking a longer route to their destination to avoid them. The native peoples of the Congo tell stories of the giant spiders coming into their villages, killing livestock and taking away small animals and even children. Goodbye, friend of Hagrid. What's more is that they build their huts with thatched roofs using a steep pitch to the ground and tightly spaced walls to prevent spiders from creeping inside. One of the oldest reported sightings of the Chibafofi was in 1890 from the English missionary Arthur Symes. He was en route to a village on the shore of Lake Nyasa in Uganda, exploring as he travelled, when several of his porters became ensnared in a huge sticky web that hung from one tree to another down to the ground. While in the process of cutting his porters from this web, which was incredibly difficult to cut through, two large spiders with a leg span of around four feet appeared and attacked the men trapped in the web. Symes fired his pistol at the spiders and they hurried away. Symes rescued his porters from the web, but the damage was already done. Within minutes of being rescued, the men became feverish, and the sight of their bites became swollen and died shortly afterwards. One of the most well-known undocumented sightings came from Reginald Lloyd and his wife in 1938. One of history's most terrifying giant spider sightings took place in the jungles of the Congo in Central Africa. It happened to a British explorer, R.K. Lloyd, and his wife, Marguerite. In 1938, Lloyd and his new bride decided to go on an adventure safari for their honeymoon. As Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd were driving down this jungle track in the middle of the Congo rainforest, they saw a large but very odd-looking creature crossing the trail ahead of them. Now, at first they thought this was either a very large monkey on all fours, or maybe a large jungle cat. But as they got closer to this creature, they were horrified to see that it was actually a gigantic spider, something like a tarantula. According to Lloyd, the spider had a four to five foot leg span, but he was unable to document the sighting. As Lloyd reached for his camera, the giant spider scurried back into the forest and disappeared. Back in the old days of colonial Africa, explorers, big game hunters, from time to time they encounter strange animals, including giant spiders, but they often don't report these observations for fear of just being ridiculed. After all, who's going to believe a story about a spider that with a leg span of four or five feet? That's almost as big as a human being. Sizes, descriptions, and species vary in different parts of the world. But on the extreme end of the spectrum, eyewitnesses describe specimens up to five feet across, with huge fangs and hairy bodies the size of small dogs. 
The problem with the tales of such colossal spiders prowling through African jungles is not that sightings are few and far between, or that we only mostly rely on native accounts for information, nor even that we have no real physical evidence for them. No, the major problem with the Chibafofi, or indeed any reports of giant spiders from around the world, has always been one of physiology. There are two main hurdles for a spider to reach the sizes reported here. The first is respiration. Spiders have either book lungs, which are respiratory organs consisting of stacked alternating air pockets and tissue, or a tracheal respiratory system consisting of a network of small tubes that branch out into the body, which is present in many insects as well. Many species of spiders have both, Yet the problem with these methods of respiration is that neither one of them is particularly efficient for exchanging atmospheric gas when dialed up to large sizes. This limits the sizes attainable by terrestrial insects and arachnids. Many of you watching may be thinking already of the numerous giant insects that once roamed the earth many millions of years ago during the Carboniferous period. But there was far more oxygen in the atmosphere in those days which could compensate for this inefficiency. And even then there were no giant spiders as large as claimed to be with the Jibafofi. This limitation of the respiratory system of arachnids puts a cap on how big they can get, and the largest known spiders today are the Goliath bird eater, which can have a span of up to 11 inches and weigh over 170 grams, and the giant huntsman spider, which is not as heavy but has a longer leg span at 12 inches and incidentally was discovered in Laos only recently in 2001, despite being so frighteningly large. These are both disturbingly large spiders to be sure, but quite possibly the maximum size attainable for a spider, and still nowhere near the incredible sizes reported for the Chibafofi. Okay, so let's say that the giant spiders of Africa have somehow evolved a radical new type of respiratory system, and have transcended the size limitation imposed on other arachnids. Even if that were the case, there is still another, perhaps even more insurmountable obstacle to face that is their exoskeleton. The problem with an exoskeleton is that it is heavy, which at smaller sizes is not really a problem. However, muscular strength is largely a function of the width of the muscle at its widest point. To put it simply, the weight of the exoskeleton is growing faster than the strength of the muscles that support and move it. What this means for the spider is that the exoskeleton will at some point become too heavy for it to carry or for it to even move. It is a formidable challenge for any arthropod to overcome if it was to become very large. To be sure, there are quite huge arthropods out there that we do know of, such as the Japanese spider crab, which can reach 3.8 meters from claw to claw. But these creatures will have the benefit of having been surrounded by water to help support all of that weight. There are indeed also enormous terrestrial arthropods in the form of the coconut crab, which can grow up to 1 meter in length and weigh 4.1 kilograms. But this is quite possibly the largest physical size possible for a land-based creature with an exoskeleton living in modern times. And as anyone who has observed a coconut crab in action will notice, that they move incredibly slowly. Considering all this, it is really hard to imagine a spider with a four to six foot leg span explosively darting out to capture prey or swiftly scurrying about through the jungle. Thankfully for the arachnophobes out there, the Chibafofi is quite possibly the unlikeliest of all the Congo cryptids. And trust me, that's saying something. Sure, the idea of living dinosaurs in the Congo is inherently far-fetched, but at least they could exist from a biomechanical point of view. Unless the world returns to the heavily oxygenated days of the Carboniferous period, we will not be seeing any massive arachnids outside of tall tails anytime soon. Thank you for listening everyone. Next week I'll be exploring more of my Alter Earth project, so stick around, and I hope to see you again soon. Cheerio!